Peace and blessings to the house, the Confederate House of Israel. Um, I'm here again because the Spirit of the Lord put something on my heart that I want to share with you. Uh, one of the things that came to me was uh, I was sitting and talking about this and God gave me the revelation. So I want to share it with the brothers and the sisters. Uh, one of the things is how we speak to one another. I had said in previous videos that there are some among us who use harsh words. They use harsh words not only to the females among us, but to the males as well, uh, making them feel less than, calling them out for their imperfections and for their lack of knowledge. Uh, but one of the things, as I was holding this conversation with a man, uh, one of the things that came to mind, that the Spirit brought to my mind, was the man that met Jesus at the tombs, that met Yeshua at the tombs. Uh, and I'm just going to read the man's description for a moment. Um, we are in the book of Mark. Chapter 5, verse beginning at the second verse. And when he was come out of the ship, immediately there met him out of the tombs a man with an unclean spirit who had his dwelling among the tombs. And no man could bind him, no, not with chains, because that he had been often bound with fetters and chains, and the chains had been plucked asunder by him and the fetters broken in pieces. Neither could any man tame him. And always, night and day, he was in the mountains and in the tombs, crying and cutting himself with stone. But when Jesus saw, but when he saw Jesus afar off, he ran and worshipped him, and cried with a loud voice and said, "What have I to do with thee, Yeshua, thou Son of the Most High? I adjure thee by God that thou torment me not." For he said unto him, "Come out of the man, thou unclean spirit." And he had asked him, what is thy name? And he answered, my name is Legion, for we are many. For we are many. And he besought him much that he would not send them away out of the country. Now we know Jesus sent those unclean spirits, the legions, into a herd of swine, a herd of swine that ran violently over a cliff. And they, they drowned. Over 2,000 of them choked in the sea. However, one of the things that I want to bring to your mind is that what Jesus did with the man who had been running around naked, he was not in his right mind, cutting himself, no man could tame him, okay? When we meet brothers and sisters from the house of Israel, instead of uh, disrespecting them, instead of... Uh, screaming and hollering at them. You need to understand what the power of the word of God can do. Jesus cast out those demons. But at the same time, that word of God that he spoke to him, he did not curse at him. He did not scream at him. And I will use him figuratively. When I say him, I mean female. They weren't screaming and cursing. Yeshua didn't scream and curse. Male, he didn't scream, curse, and disrespect them. Okay? And I'm using the man at the tombs as an example. Jesus not only removed, cast out the demons, but he spoke the word of God to him. He spoke the word of life. So much so, that word was so transforming that the next time the people saw that same man, he was sitting in front of Jesus in his right mind, clothed and in his right mind, sitting and listening to Jesus. OK, Jesus, the word of God is transformative. It's transformative when you meet people. OK, and they're not speaking right. They're not thinking right. They're not talking right. You need to cast out that demon that's in them. 
But at the same time, speak the living word to them. There's power in the word of God. There's there's transformation in the word of God. Okay. That man who was running around naked, he was clothed. He wasn't just clothed literally. You have to look at the example of what the word of life is showing us. He was clothed in the spirit. He was filled up. His mind was transformed. It was made over. So instead of using the words of the world to brothers and sisters who are in darkness, who have been entombed by demonic forces that they don't know how to free themselves from. They cut their own selves by their behaviors, by their words, by their appearance, by their actions. But we, knowing the power of what God can do, knowing the power of his word, we speak that word over them. We let the word of God have his perfect work. Okay, and just like that man was sitting in his right mind and clothed before Jesus, that work was still moving at such a forceful rate that the people of the town came to see what was going on. And the herdsmen told him what Jesus had done. The people got scared. They wanted him to leave. They wanted him out of their town. Okay, Jesus went to leave and the man who he had helped, the man who he had set free from that legion of demons who he had in his right mind now, who was clothed not only in uh, fleshly garments, not only in material garments, but in the Holy Spirit, the spirit of the most high was with him. Okay, he was clothed about him with the word of God. He wanted to follow Jesus, but Jesus gave him a charge. Jesus told him, no, you can't go with me. Go back. Go back and tell them what's happened. I'm going to read it exact. Okay. He said, how be it Jesus suffered him not, but said unto him, go home to thy friends and tell them how great things the Lord has done for thee and has had compassion on thee. We have to have compassion on one another, brothers and sisters. When you see sisters who are not in their right mind, who are not talking right, who are not dressed right, they may be naked like the man was. You may see brothers the same way with their pants hanging off of their behind, showing their butt, okay, talking crazy. You have to speak the word. Let the word have its perfect work, okay? He not only did he help the man, put him in his right mind, clothed him, not just in fabric, but in the spirit of the most high God, through his word, okay? He transformed that man, and you want to know how transformative it was? He took that man from a madman to an evangelist. That man went back and told what the Lord had done for him, and anybody that ran into that man knew this thing is real. He transformed him on more than one level because the word of God is pregnant with revelation, with transformation. That man became a winner of souls. He started speaking and preaching and teaching the word of God and what God could do, what God had done. And people knew it was true. Okay. This is something that we need to do to one another, that we need to do for one another's brothers and sisters. When we are not clothed in our right mind, when we are not uh, dressed in the appropriate way, and when you see women going about doing this great work, understand something. God created us to be a help me to men. So we are doing what God ordained us to do. This is a great work. God is not going to limit his work. But I just wanted to share this word with you that when you see sisters and they're not talking right or they're not dressed right, one of the things about a woman, even if she's screaming and hollering and cursing, if you speak to her with kindness, if you speak to her with love, she hears you. If you continue to do so, she'll start calming down. It will drive those demons away. You don't know what life these people have led, be they male or female. You don't know the demonic attacks they have been under, that they want to get some help for, but they don't know how. 
And it's evident that the people around them didn't know how to help them either. But we being workers of the most high God, soldiers, we know how to cast down those devils. We know how to cast them out and speak in the word of God to them doing a mighty work. Just like Jesus did, he did not curse the man out. He did not dishonor the man because he was running around nude. He was running around naked, screaming, hollering, chasing people away. Jesus didn't run from him and he didn't profane the man. He went to him, cast those demons out, spoke the word of life to him to where he restored his thinking. He restored his mind, set that man down before him and gave him a meal called the, the bread of life. The word of God is power. It can do what no other word can do. It does it for men and it does it for women. Oh, yes, we know it does it for women because he met that other woman by the well. That Samaritan woman. OK, she was alone at the well, which tells you. That the women of the town wouldn't be near her. They didn't like her. The fact that she wasn't there at the gathering hole with the rest of the women. Okay. The men weren't there either. So she was probably uh, considered a fallen woman. You need to read the times. All right. And yet, by the time Jesus finished with her, by the time Jesus finished talking to her, when he spoke those words of life to her, by the time she went back to the town, he took a fallen woman that everyone else avoided and turned her into an evangelist. And you know it was working because not only did people believe her, there were people that came from out of the town and went to see Jesus themselves. And we know it's true now. But the only way that they even knew about him was Jesus and his transformative power spoke to that woman transformed her from a fallen woman to an evangelist. So much so, she went in the town, started saving souls, and sent souls out to him to be saved. Don't tell me what God cannot do. The power of his word. The power of his word, my brothers and sisters. I want you to be edified. And when we meet one another along the streets, don't use the words of the world. Use the word of life. And watch it do its perfect work, transforming, covering those that are naked against the wiles of the demons and the beast of this world. Let them be clothed in their right minds. Let their bodies be clothed and let God do his perfect work. Let God work it out. You may run across somebody that you put down and be seeking a word from them one day because when God touches somebody, God can take somebody from low and raise them on high. Can you imagine people in the town where that woman had lived or where that man who lived amongst the tombs stalked naked? They put him down and looked down on him because you know you always got them kind of folks. Uh, how they must have felt? When that same person suddenly was looked upon as an evangelist, the person who was doing it didn't even know it. They were just doing the work of the Lord. God had touched them, changed them. People sitting listening for any and every word they said that they got from the living God. Oh, yes, God can do anything. He used a man that was considered a madman. He couldn't be held by chains or fetters, running around cutting himself. But the word of God is like a two-edged sword. That word cut both ways. It cut those demons out of that man's life. It cut down all those hypocrites that laughed at that man that did not want to help him. God can show you something, something, okay? He can show you something, something. It let everybody know before you point a woman, a, a, a finger at that woman at the well, let me show you what I'll do. With what you consider a fallen woman, I raise up. I tear down those, those spiritual strongholds, okay? He took that same woman and made her an evangelist. He took that same man and made him an evangelist. And trust me, when people saw him, they knew God's been here. They wanted to get closer. I want some of what she got. I want some of what he got because this thing is real and it's good. Where, where's that man that you saw? Where's Jesus? There was people being won over. And they were being won over by the exact same people that the world rejected. Remember, God uses the weak things of the world to confound those things that are mighty. 
Okay, God uses those things that are despised to bring to not those things that are. So don't think too highly of oneself. Let's just honor God that God has allowed us to wake up. And it is an honor to share and to spread his word. We are not going to dishonor young men who are still coming into the truth. We are not going to dishonor female women. We are helpmates. And God has given us a charge. This is not a competition. Nobody's after vain glory. I'm doing my father's work and I will have to answer to God. But this thing is on me so heavy that when the spirit moves me, I move. I move and I will give an answer. My hands are clear of the blood because I'm giving the testimony my father gave me. I'm giving that testimony. He made us help meets. Help me. I think a lot of men need to go back and recognize what is a help me? What is a help? In this mighty work, God made us help me. Okay? And by the same token, like I said, instead of cursing each other out, instead of disrespecting one another because somebody's not in their right mind, somebody's not clothed properly, be they male or female, speak the word over them. Speak the word and let it have its way. God's word go out, don't come back. Well, he does exactly what he purposed it to do. You may find one day that when you fall, you may find one day when you're having a weak moment, that same brother or sister who God has now raised up can reach down and raise you up too because we all need each other. This is based on love. Remember, God does this so that all of us, it's for the Confederate House of Israel. It's so that all of us can benefit. Why? Because we're giving honor and glory to God. This isn't my word. It isn't your word. It's the word of the Most High Living God. It's the Holy Spirit. It is the Father Elohim. There is none that come close to him. God doesn't tolerate any rivals. So I'm going to honor and glorify God. And when we speak to one another, we are not going to call each other names. We are not going to disrespect each other. Whether it's a sister or a brother, we're going to be like Jesus with the man at the tombs. Okay. Yes. When met him, he was not in his right mind. He run around naked, screaming and hollering. Nobody could do anything with him. The woman at the well, everybody looking down, I don't want to be around her. I know all about her, honey. She got a reputation and the men like, mm -mm -mm -mm. you know, the men probably hit out because they might have spent some time with her and didn't want anybody to know because you know how that goes. Um, but God sees everything. He sees everything. And the ones that the world despise, the ones that they call weak, God uses the weak things of the world to confound the strong. Those things that are rejected of men. Remember, Jesus was rejected too. Yes, sure. Okay, so I want you to be encouraged. I want you to take this word. God is sending it out as a sign. He's, there's somebody. I can feel it. I can feel spirit. Somebody's supposed to hear this. This word is for you. If God did it for the man at the tomb, if he did it, for the woman at the well, and let's not even talk about Nicodemus. Nicodemus was sitting on the Sanhedrin. He was sitting high, but he didn't understand. He too had to be humble. Jesus told him, you got to be born again. You got to be born again. He's like, can a man be born twice from his mother? He didn't understand. Although he had regard for Jesus, I'm not going to put Nicodemus down. But what I'm telling you is, don't let your earthly position fool you. Okay? God does not look at the outer appearance like man does. God looks at us from our hearts. It's from our hearts. So when you do what you do, you do it from the heart, honoring God and the brethren, brethren men, men and women. When I say brethren or the Confederate House of Israel, that's men, women, the children, and all of us in between. Okay? And we use the word of life, the word of God, to do it. Somebody out there is supposed to hear this word. I was actually on my way out the door and it hit me so strong. I am making this video because somebody is supposed to hear this. God speaking directly to you for confirmation, for edification, for exhortation. God's talking to you. Okay. And I listen to the move of the spirit. I feel the move of the spirit. I try to be sensitive to the move of the spirit 
and honor God. All honor, all glory, all exaltation, all praise unto the Most High God, the Holy Ruach, and Yeshua. Okay? And my brothers and sisters, you be at peace. You be blessed. Be a blessing. Speak his word. I'm like Joshua. His word is going to be continually in my mouth. I will meditate on it night and day. Meditation is not just thinking. That's the etymology of the English language. Meditation also means thinking and speaking it. Okay? So you be blessed and become a blessing to one another. Shalom. I think this stopped, or maybe it didn't, and if it didn't, once again, I have to say, I'm still learning right along with you guys. Much love, brothers and sisters. Be loved, because you are loved, beloved.